Hello, and welcome to Cooking with Tingles. I am Chef Matt, and today I'll be showing you how to make several different recipes, ranging from common staples to more exotic delicacies. I do hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. We will start with some common breakfast items, the simplest of which is the humble slice of toast. To make toast, all you need is a slice of bread and a toaster. So here we have our bread, just a single slice of bread, and next we'll want to bring out our toaster. So simply take the knob on your kitchen counter and turn it to the toaster setting. Once the toaster appears, all you have to do is place the slice of toast into the toaster. Now, it is very important that you are careful when you put it into this toaster. You don't want to touch the edges of the toaster or else you'll get kind of a metallic flavor on your toast. So be very, very careful. Just very carefully slide it in there. And there we go. So once you have the toast in the toaster, and it's nice and snug, all you have to do is take this lever here and push it down. And once it's done, it'll pop right out, and you can catch it on the way up. You don't have to catch it on the way up, but uh, I've found that it tastes much better if you do. Otherwise, sometimes it'll land in there and get some of the old crumbs from the burnt pieces on the bottom. But uh, it's not the end of the world if it lands back in the toaster. So once you have your slice of toast and it's all toasted, you can put whatever you want on it. But for now, we're going to leave it uh, plain as is. We're going to put it right here on the plate. So next up is another classic breakfast item. And that is bacon and eggs. First, we'll take some of these... Uh, Bacon strips, just a couple. We'll place them on the grill right there. And now, close the freezer. Don't want things to get too toasty in there. And we'll turn up our grill to medium temperature. Next, we'll bring out a couple of eggs. And we will crack them right on the grill. Contrary to popular belief, leaving the eggshells on there does improve the flavor. So, we'll leave those right there. And the bacon's looking nice and crispy right there, but I think it could use a little more time. As you can see, the eggshells, they kind of break apart, but uh, they blend into the flavor of the eggs when they're finished. So you don't have to worry about that. Even if you can't see them, you will be able to taste them. And it looks like we're almost done here. Just a bit more. You don't want to overcook them, so you got to be careful about that. And I think we should be good. So, once those are looking nice and crispy, what you want to do is turn off the grill, of course, and now... And just pick these up with your bare hands, don't worry, it's not too hot. And we'll place them right on top of the toast. So there we have it, our classic breakfast. And what to top off a classic breakfast with? And a glass of milk. So, we'll take this milk here and pour it in a cup. Any cup will do, really. As long as it can contain milk. It should work just fine. So, just place that right on top of the eggs. And here we go. We're going to send it out to our waiting patrons. And there it goes. So, before we move on from the breakfast section of the show, I'd like to show you one of my favorite breakfast items. One that's not quite as common as those, but uh, I do think it is perhaps the best of the breakfast items. And that is, of course, the cheese omelette, or as I like to call it, omelette du fromage. To make a cheese omelette, 
you want to start with a couple of eggs like before and just throw those right on the grill again you can leave the eggshells there and then you want to take a couple of blocks of cheese make sure you have entire blocks slices slices or shredded cheese they don't work quite as well you want to get the whole block on there so throw those on top and uh, turn it up to high heat Let's wait while that goes and uh, cooks. Might just take a moment. And I think that's probably good for our cheese omelet. So we have the cheese omelet right here. And we'll place it on this plate. And out it goes to some happy waiting hungry customers as you can see the customers are a bit transparent uh, that's because we are a uh, restaurant for ghosts that's it a restaurant for ghosts now that may sound that might sound a little weird but ghosts have an appetite just like everyone else so next we're going to uh we're going to make something healthy a smoothie a fruit smoothie to make a smoothie, all you want to do is turn the knob on your uh, kitchen counter to the blender setting, and out will come the blender. To uh, start, you want to put a liquid base in there, because if you just have solid foods, it's going to be very, very thick and chunky. It's not going to be so much of a drinkable smoothie as a uh, kind of a clump of food items or fruit. So. Our liquid will start with something that uh, is a fantastic base for most smoothies, and that is vintage vine grape juice. Now, don't be fooled. This is non-alcoholic. Though, if you wanted to, you could put some alcohol in your smoothie. It's not up to me. So, we'll take some of this grape juice in here, and we'll place it in the blender. Don't want to put too much. Just... Uh, Maybe about a about a quarter of the way up, maybe a third. And place that back in here, where, as you can see, another bottle of grape juice has magically appeared. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll notice that your food is reproducing while in the cupboard. That's totally natural. They do have a reproductive system like many other living things. But uh, that's something for another episode. So next we'll take some fruits. We have an orange and an apple. So we'll just... I seem to have confused these two. This isn't an orange and an apple. This is a lemon and an orange. Okay, so place those in there. And then we'll uh, blend things up. And now, before we finish up the smoothie, we can place a little bit, a few more ingredients in there. So I like to put avocados in my smoothie. Not just one avocado, but two. And it seems I may have... Uh, Drop something on the floor here. Is this, a, is this a plum, perhaps? Or a peach? Looks like a peach, so... I know it fell on the floor, but... Contrary to popular belief, the kitchen floor is maybe one of the cleanest places you can put something, so... I'm going to take this peach and add it to the smoothie. Because why not? So once those are nice and snug in there, we will blend it up. And I think we need one last ingredient the smoothie and what better than a slice of bread that's right folks carbs are the answer to everything in life if you ask me so we'll put that in there and there we have our smoothie we will now take our kettle 2000 and put it in here i know this is a kettle but we need a large container and honestly while i am a pro chef this is the only large container i have in this kitchen so we have it in the container here and if you want you can pour it into some cups you know you gotta be very careful not to spill it but uh, if you spill it just a tiny bit like that it's okay as long as it's mostly full and now eh, who needs the kettle we'll just place a bit more in here and then put this on the the, the plate and finally, 
one more cup of the smoothie. And once you have this, you can just throw it on the uh, plate and send it out. Bye-bye, smoothies. Now, next up, what are we going to do next? Ah, yes. Next, we'll make a sandwich. I like to call this one the Matt Special. And you'll see exactly what I mean when I make it. So to make a sandwich, I'm going to bring out the patented sandwich needle. So as you can see here, we have the sandwich needle. And to start with a sandwich, of course, you need what other than a slice of bread. So you want to place your slice of bread on the sandwich needle. And next up, you can add whatever ingredients you want if you're making your own sandwich. But Matt Special is a very special sandwich. So the first thing we're going to put on here is potato. And not sliced potato, not mashed potato, just potato. So, once you have a potato on there, you want to put none other than a peach and a cherry. In that order, it is very important that the cherry goes on top of the peach. If you don't do it this way, the flavor will be completely ruined, to put it bluntly. And then, one and a half cookies. You first put the full cookie, and then the half-eaten cookie. Next up, you want to put just a tiny bit of grape juice, but it's very important that if you've already opened a bottle of grape juice, that will not do for the Matt Special. The Matt Special requires a freshly opened bottle of grape juice. Even if it's just a few minutes old, this will not do. So, we'll take our freshly opened bottle of grape juice, and we will place this cork on the plate and send it out. Well, I'm at it, because some of our patrons are ghosts. They love the taste of cork. Anyway, as I was saying about this here Matt Special, you want to sprinkle just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of grape juice on here. Not too much. So, you have to be very careful. If you put too much, it'll overwhelm the entire sandwich. Just a few drops. Just a few drops. Not too much. Just maybe no more than like a like a prescription eye drops amount that you would put in your eye. Okay. And I think that might be enough. Almost. Okay, there we go. So once you're done with your grape juice, uh this one's probably empty, so I'll just throw it over there. Once you're done with your grape juice, you want to bring out the fridge. And the next thing on the Mad Special is a raw steak. So, you have the raw steak on there. And finally, you want to put one carrot on the sandwich. So, as with any sandwich, you can top it off with a slice of bread and then a humble olive. But that's not all. You see, the Matt Special is a unique sandwich in that while it does not have cooked meats, we do put it on the grill. It's careful that you don't let the steak touch the grill because if the meat gets cooked, that is a major problem. You want the raw meat. And I don't have time to explain why, but just, just trust me on this one. So you want to warm it up just a bit, and that should be good to go. There you have it. The Matt Special. Slice of bread, potato, peach, cherry, one and a half cookies, an uncooked steak, a carrot, and another slice of bread with just a tiny, tiny dash of grape juice. Put this here on the plate and send it out. Now, while you're at it, you may want to uh, clean up this grape juice bottle because it it may be it may be a hazard to your feet in terms of glass, but more importantly, it's really ugly. So, 
We'll just throw it right out there. You don't want it littering all. You don't want it uh, taking up your kitchen. Sometimes you may go to pick up a piece of glass and it'll just shatter into more pieces of glass and disappear on your floor. That's okay. That's one of the many strange properties of glass. So, next, I'll be showing you how to make pizza. To make pizza, you want to start with something you start many recipes with, and that is a slice of bread. And what you want to do next is put some tomato sauce on the bread. So to make our tomato sauce, we're going to start by placing the bread over here, and bring out the blender. Once you have the blender out, you want to place a fresh tomato in there, maybe two. And pull the lever to blend it. So once you have your tomato sauce, you want to take the bread and slather it right on there. And next up, you want to be second most important ingredient on a pizza, and that is cheese. So you place the cheese on there, and what pizza would be a pizza without any uh, additional ingredients? So we'll start with some broccoli, as well as some bacon. Just place it right there. And while we're at it, we'll bring out some of the uh, room temperature foods. And we'll place some cookies on here. We'll just kind of make some room for it right there. And finally, half a potato. So once you have all the essential ingredients on your pizza, you'll want to bring out the microwave. Contrary to popular belief, the microwave is actually the best way to cook a pizza. Some people will tell you an oven is necessary, but I say they're wrong. So you'll pick up your pizza here, and sometimes your pizza will fall apart, but that's okay. So if that happens, all you need to do is just take the ingredients and throw them right back in. They don't actually have to be on top of the pizza, it doesn't really matter too much. but you want to grab them, just throw them right in that microwave with its healthy green light. Green means health. And hey, looks like we dropped some cheese, so couldn't hurt to have some extra cheese in there. All right, so we can close the door, and we will now cook our pizza for exactly three seconds. Any longer, and you will overcook the pizza. So there we have it. A beautiful, beautiful pizza with potato, cookie, broccoli, cheese, and somehow a pepperoni got on there. Sometimes that may happen. Pizzas are known to be, are known to have a mind of their own. And sometimes, while in the microwave for those three seconds, they'll kind of go on a journey and uh, find some pepperoni to put on themselves. So that's okay. Now this one, this one, I. I don't think ghosts like pizza, so I'll have this one myself. I'm going to do a taste test. Um, okay, now that is some good pizza. Delicious. Now, if you prefer, you can either eat the crust, or you can throw it to the fishes. Sometimes, when you uh, throw crust in water, it can spontaneously combust, as you saw right there, so... You want to be very careful of that. Another food item that may spontaneously combust in water is the uh, lemon. Sometimes you'll come across some combustible lemons, so you want to be very careful about these as well. Let me demonstrate. It seems I've missed with this lemon, so let's try it one more time. It's very rare that my uh, throws miss this aquarium here, so let's try it one more time. Well, this, this is embarrassing. Third time's the charm, right? Third time is the charm. Hmm. Must be the, uh, the uh, nerves of being on air. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let's try it one more time. One more time. Now, 
if this was a basketball hoop, that would have been a slam dunk. But no, alas, it was not. So let's try this for the last time. There we go. And as you can see, it makes a huge mess. And it may even be a fire hazard, but it's in water, so it doesn't matter too much right there. Anyway, the next thing we'll be making is a pot of soup. So to make some soup, you want to switch your grill over to the pot setting and start with a liquid base. You want some broth for your soup. And what better than some blended corn and potatoes? So we'll get some corn and some potatoes. We'll shove it in the blender. We'll also take this pretzel and this cookie. These are also essential ingredients when it comes to making a soup broth. They don't tell you about this in school, kids. And uh, some cherries and some plums. That one's not getting away. But I'll put this one in there in its place. It seems my hand-eye coordination is a bit off today, so please forgive me. But let's throw another cherry in there. Like I said, cherries, plural, not singular. And we'll see if the food reproduces in this short time period. There we go. Now some peaches. Oh, we'll get back here. We'll get back here. It seems I've inadvertently eaten half of this peach in the process. But that's okay. Saliva kind of adds to the flavor. So I'll place that in there. And you know your broth is ready to be blended when the corn spontaneously pops out to the side of the blender. So here we go. Let's blend it. There we go. So we have our broth. And to transfer the broth, we'll take our kettle and place it right here. There we go. Place it in the pot. Get a bit more. Place it in the pot. And finally the last of it. And place it in the pot. So we don't need this anymore. We'll just throw it out there. And the next thing to put in a soup is the salt ingredients. So, like with many of our other recipes, we of course want a slice of bread. What else could we put in there? Ah, I got it. We can put some hand soap. Or actually, this looks like dish, so dish soap. The pink color really gives it the uh, flavor it needs. The color pink is very strong, though, so I don't want to put too much in there. And now, in our soup, I want to put... One and a half avocados. You can leave the pit in there. That's okay. Just add some flavor. And a couple of crumpets. So let's get those right in there. We'll also want to put some grape juice. So you want to be very, very liberal with the grape juice. Uh, you could almost put the whole bottle in there. So let's put a bunch of grape juice in there. There we go. So next up pretzel. While you do have the pretzel and cookie flavors in the broth, having them there as a solid also improves it. Kind of like chicken noodle soup with the uh, chicken in the broth as well as solid chunks. You could also put some hot sauce in there. It might improve the flavor. And what else can we put in our soup? Ah, yes. I almost forgot. But this is Totally Disco Volume 96 CD. This will bring the flavor of the 70s to your soup. And if you don't know what the flavor of the 70s tastes like, go to your local restaurant and find out for yourself. I can't explain it. Now, what we could also put in there is some chili powder. Be careful that you get chili powder with a Y and not an I, because it's a bit redundant with the hot sauce in there if you get the other kind of chili powder. You want it to feel like Christmas. 
in your soup. So we'll put that back. And we'll get some salt and pepper. Put those back. And now for the final ingredient. If you really want to put a personal touch on your soup and you work in a restaurant like me, you can take the restaurant menu and put it right in there. Don't worry about it being edible or not. Once you cook it, it'll be nice and edible. So I'll place that in there. And here we go. There's our soup. You know it's good to go when certain objects start shaking and kind of uh, transposing themselves through the side of the pot. It means they're very excited to be soup. So we'll turn that up to full heat. And here it goes. It's cooking. And voila, we have our soup. You'll know it's done when it comes out with a can and a label. And this is labeled the naturally artificial bread slice avocado and avocado soup. This is one of our signature, signature dishes here at Gourmet Grub. You can come by anytime and taste it if you'd like. Ding. And finally, we will end with what I like to call the masterpiece. This is something that cannot be explained beforehand. You'll just have to see it for yourself. But I can tell you, it is a sort of stew. Let's begin. We'll start much like, uh, much like we did with the soup by placing some liquids into the pot. I want to start with some milk, just a bit. And sometimes you may notice that uh, milk has kind of a clown car-like quality to it, where much more milk than you might expect may fit into cartons. You want to make sure this is about three quarters full with milk, and you can discard the milk if you'd like. Next up, a couple of eggs. Now. If one falls on the floor, that's okay, but you don't want to put it in there. Don't ask me why. I don't have time to explain it. I'll put a couple of tomatoes in there as well, and a couple of mushrooms. And while you're at it, some cheese, and some carrots, and of course, some broccoli. Next up, we want to put two raw steaks in there, as well as whatever these things are. I honestly don't know what they are. You want to shove it right down there if it needs to, uh, if you need to make some room for it. And uh, of course, to add to the flavor, we can have a hot pocket, hot pocket, and a turkey leg. Now, the next ingredients we want to put in there are this tomato, and this orange, as well as one half of a lemon. And uh, in case you missed it over here, we do have a pomegranate. Place that right there. And a flower. Be sure to include the pot. The pot is very important. While we're at it, we'll also put this cactus in a pot in there. And now we'll get some uh, room temperature foods. Next up, some crumpets. And remember, every so often you want to just kind of shove it down in there. Don't worry, it'll all fit. Next up, we got a flower without a pot. It's important that you have one flower without a pot and one, one flower with a pot. Next up, you want to put some hot sauce in there, in the whole bottle. Bottle included, not just, not just what's inside the bottle. You want to make sure the bottle's in there. Nice and nice and snug. And some corn. And actually, before we continue, we'll want to cook the corn just a bit. So we'll come back to that. And put that on high. As you can see we got some popcorn coming out of the corn there. 
and that is indeed normal. No need to worry about that. If you want, you can try and catch some with your face as well. Nice and tasty. Hum. 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 Oh. It seems I may have inadvertently eaten the corn itself as well, so let's try with another piece of corn. Wait for it to reproduce. There we go. And this time I'm not going to eat the popcorn because I seem to have had some trouble containing myself, but that's okay. Okay. So once the corn is nice and crispy, bring back our pot. And we'll throw it right in there. Now, it's very important that you also have not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not ten, but eleven slices of bread in the pot. Just cram those down. Okay. And now we'll reach in here. And we'll put some grape juice. And much like with the hot sauce, you want to put the whole bottle in there. And it's, uh, it actually is more flavorful to break it into pieces first. Put some cookies as well. And some more hot sauce, this time out of the bottle. And some uncooked corn. Now the next thing you want to put in there is literature. Literature is very important to the flavor of the masterpiece. You can just kind of stack it like that and then squish it down. And some more of this, some more of that. And what's, oh, I almost forgot, a special ingredient. Hot and Steamy Gadgets Magazine. Now I know what you're thinking, Matt, is this an appropriate place to have Hot and Steamy Gadgets Magazine? Well, to answer your question, yes, yes it is. Because smut as this may be, it tastes absolutely delicious in a stew. Go back to the fridge. Put some apples in there. Some mushrooms. Some eggs. And some more cheese. Just shove it right down there. And we can also put a kettle in a cup. And this other cactus as well. And of course, some more milk, carton included. Some more frozen meats are always a good idea. Never have enough hot pockets either. And then smack it right down there. Might have to be pretty vigorous with the force here. Just make, er make sure everything is in the pot. So, I think this is, I think this is pretty good. Now we'll turn it up to the lowest heat possible. Just super tiny. If you want, you can stick your hand in there to test the flavor. Delicious, okay. And here it comes. Ah, there we go. So here we have it. The naturally artificial meatball and corn soup, or as I like to call it, the masterpiece. Now, you may notice that some of this food appears to be uh, all over the kitchen, but I assure you that is an optical illusion caused by the intense flavor of the masterpiece. The masterpiece is indeed so flavorful 
that it's it's like it's almost like every flavor you taste is just surrounding you your surroundings become your meal and so we will put the masterpiece on the plate and send it out to a very lucky customer And that concludes today's episode of Cooking with Tingles. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you have the opportunity to make some of these recipes for yourself at some point. This is Chef Matt, and I will see you next time. Good night.